Hello and welcome back. You have sent so many insightful questions on Instagram and in this video you are going to hear the answer to about 15 of them that I have copied and pasted into a notepad here on my phone and most of them as you may have guessed pertain to weight loss following a low calorie density diet with a few personal questions sprinkled in for fun as well. And before we get into the questions, I always recommend to trust yourself above what anyone else has to say, especially advice on the internet. I am always reminding everyone that this is just my personal experience with my own weight loss and my body and everybody's metabolism is different. Everyone's body is different and everyone's experience, meaning exactly what they're eating, exactly what their lifestyle is, is different. And so if something that I say just doesn't resonate with you, then I want to encourage you and just remind you to trust yourself and to trust any medical professionals that you may be seeing. Number one is, do you ever eat more than one potato at a meal? Absolutely. Absolutely. I do not weigh or measure potatoes, starches, uh, fruit, vegetable, beans, anything that I eat with the exception of currently, now that I'm not losing weight anymore, I eat a bit of tofu and avocado and pasta. But when I was losing weight, over 14 months ago, I've, I started eating this way 100%. And I personally wanted to follow something where I didn't have to measure or weigh or count anything or keep track of what I, you know, how much and calories. And that for me is just something that knowing myself, knowing my own tendencies, and my own habits, that's just not something that I would be able to do long term. And so I wanted to just eat in a way where I could just eat until I'm comfortably full. If my body says I'm still hungry, I can just trust that and eat more and not gain weight. And when you follow low calorie density, when you eat whole plant foods that are under 700 calories per pound, you can do so. And I will say if you are close to your ideal weight range or if you have you know, a slower metabolism and you find that it, you're having a challenge getting the last 10 or so pounds off, then maybe you need to adjust that 700 calories per pound maximum and bring it down a little bit and maybe stick with foods that are under 650 or 600 calories per pound. Um, but I personally do not limit the amount of potatoes. I do not limit the amount of rice. And another question that's quite similar to this that I get asked often is, do I think it's okay to mix more than one starch per meal? And to that, I'll also say absolutely. If you have been watching my recipe videos, you'll see that I often mix rice and beans and potatoes, sweet potatoes, and I don't follow any sort of rule that says I can only have one wet starch per meal. Not at all. All right. Was it harder to start again on low fat calorie density way of eating the second time around? So I, if you haven't seen uh, some of the videos when I've spoken about this, I tried doing a low calorie density way of eating a no oil diet many years ago and it worked well and for some reason or another I slowly started introducing the oils a bit of peanut butter here and there then I'd put peanut butter in my oatmeal again and then before I knew it I was on packaged vegan foods uh, vegan cheeses vegan meats and I just I gained all the way back and more and I got up to my highest weight. And so to answer the question, it was actually much easier the second time because I had that proof of what worked for me. I didn't, you know, I didn't think, oh, what if I try it and it doesn't work? I knew it could work. The only thing that I had to kind of reframe in my own mind was what was it that 
didn't allow me to continue doing that? What and what would it take for me to make it easy on myself to eat that way long term without you know, going back to the junk foods. And I could go in depth into that topic and I, and I will, but I will say one of the big things is making sure that you're full and bringing food with you that is low calorie density. So if you are going somewhere where you know there's gonna be no food, at times you're gonna be tempted to have food on you, even if it's a little glass container of meal prepped uh, veggies, rice and beans, with some lime juice and garlic powder or having an apple and a banana in your bag if you're going out for a few hours. Whatever it may be, whatever is something that is a, a quick snack that you would like to take with you, that's something I highly recommend, especially when you're first starting out. Um, but I will, go, I will go deeper into that topic of what made the difference and what enabled me to stick with this for 14 months easily. And I don't say that uh, flippantly and I don't say that to make it sound like I you know oh it's so easy for me um, and I don't want anyone who's having a challenge sticking to this way of eating to feel bad because of that but I am speaking my truth and being completely honest with you that this is easy for me now now that I've created these habits and routines this is just my food I don't think about low calorie density in my own day-to-day -day life. I just have my home, my pantry, my fridge stocked with all of the foods that are within those categories and that's just my food. And so I come up with all these sorts of you know, yummy creations based on those foods and it is quite easy for me now. So that's, that's actually, and that's part of the reason that I, I love to share this is because I know how good it feels to not have to put a ton of work into staying slim and to being at a body, you know, in a body that you feel really comfortable and, and feeling your best in. So I like to share that with others. Do I ever eat off plan, popcorn, etc.? cetera? Uh, very rarely, very, very rarely. I had a piece of vegan Oreo, uh, cake from Whole Foods for at Thanksgiving um, and we left like we didn't bring that back to our house so one of the and, and I will say I wouldn't have done that if I was still focused on weight loss I actually had been going lower in my weight than I was actually comfortable with so I keep losing weight if I don't like I will weigh myself now just to make sure I'm not getting too too thin I like to be minimum 105 pounds. So when I saw myself going to 104, 103, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have, I'm out, I'll have a piece of this cake. And I don't bring it home so that I don't get you know, hooked on it. Um, but would I recommend it for weight loss? I'm gonna be a little bit blunt and a little bit bold and say no. There are enough delicious foods that you can eat um, that you can feel comfortably full on, satisfied. Uh, so if, you, if weight loss is your goal, do I recommend having a quote unquote cheat day? This is my personal opinion, my personal experience of what works for me. No, I don't. I don't recommend having a cheat day. I don't recommend going off plan a little bit. One of the big reasons is that your palate is adjusting to whole plant foods. So the longer you go without eating the processed chemicals and the things that are in like protein bars, granola bars, chips, cookies, the chemicals that are in there that stimulate your brain and, and go ding, ding, ding on all of those taste circuits that make you want more of those flavors, right? Natural foods can't compete with that. <laughs> so of course, uh, chocolate chip cookies are always going to taste better than, you know, a slice of cantaloupe. But the longer you go without the junk food, you're, you're, you kind of, and I don't want to use the word detox, but you kind of just forget about those foods and you just refocus on the whole plant foods that you have in front of you and enjoy those more. So I find that it's almost like teasing yourself. Why tease yourself with those hyper stimulating junk foods once a week? And it kind of makes all of the other food just not as delicious. That's just a personal opinion. I don't believe in cheat days. There are enough yummy foods that you can make using sweet potatoes, 
uh, pumpkin, cinnamon, so many yummy flavors that, you know, I just say embrace this if, you, if this is something that you want to do and give it a fair shot. And yeah, so, so a 30 day challenge can't harm anything. If you are unsure of if you'll be able to eat this way, quote unquote, forever, which I feel is putting a lot of pressure on yourself to even say that, then why not try a 30 day challenge with zero junk food and see how that goes. See how you feel. See if you end up feeling like, oh, I didn't actually end up craving them after the first couple of weeks. Once I weaned myself off of them and got used to the whole natural plant foods and the tastiness of those, then you might surprise yourself with how little you actually end up craving the popcorn, chips, etc. If you had to choose three meals a day, what would they be? Hmm. Oatmeal, like a cinnamony oatmeal for sure. With maybe some blueberries. Second meal would be hmm, a poke bowl. You know I love poke bowls. So this is a meal that I would get out at a poke restaurant. So yummy. And the third one would be maybe pasta with veggies and lots of garlic and chili flakes. All right, where is the first place you want to visit when things are better? Well, of course I want to see my mom in Vancouver. Um, my dad is coming here soon. He lives in the US, but my mom lives in Canada and I haven't seen her, seen her a long time. I want to visit all my family and friends in Canada. Other than that, Thailand. I love Thailand. It has a special place in my heart. Where is the, f oh, just read that. How old are you and your nationality? I'm 33 and a half. May 12th, 1987 is my birthday. Go Tauruses. And my nationality, I'm Canadian citizen. I was born in Toronto, Canada. I spent most of my life in Vancouver, Canada on the West Coast. And my, I guess, Biologically, my parents are both Italian. I wasn't born there, but I'm, I guess, 100% Italian because both of my parents are from Italy. Their parents are all from Italy and their parents' parents are all from Italy. So I've never done one of those uh, genetic testing DNA tests, but I'm kind of curious to see how far back I am Italian. Have you done one of those before? Have you, is that something that you're interested in? I, I wasn't really interested in it, but more recently I've been thinking it would be kind of cool just out of curiosity to see my genetic heritage, I suppose. Your hair is amazing. Is it naturally curly? Do you use heat on it? Thank you so much. You know, if, if this I, I did myself. My hair is not naturally like this. I use like a crimper kind of a tool. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. But I actually, this is really weird. When I was a child, my hair was straight with a very slight wave. And then when I was around like 14, 15, 16, my hair was even more curly than this. I, I can try to find a photo, but maybe I'll share it on Instagram. Um, but my hair was like curly, curly, curly and thick and long, like twice as thick as this. And, um, and then I don't, I think maybe like puberty hormones, that's the only thing that I could think of that resulted in that. And then after I started bleaching it, it was like very blonde, very damaged, bleaching it like crazy. It, it lost the curl and then it kind of never came back. So my natural hair is just kind of like a, a bit of a light wave, but nowhere near the big, beautiful curls that I had when I was like, yeah, 14. But thank you again. Hypothyroidism and low calorie density, yay or nay? First of all, if you haven't already seen an endocrinologist, you may want to do that and ask them this question. I am not a doctor, not even a little bit of a doctor, nowhere near a doctor. But what I would say is hypothyroidism, one of the main symptoms of it is feeling very lethargic and very tired. Now, I will say that eating large portions of food, as I do, can 
exacerbate that. And so that is actually the reason that I don't eat super early in the morning. I wake up with energy and I've experimented with this a little bit. When I eat a big bowl of oatmeal, say at like 6 or 7 a.m., I don't feel as high energy. I don't feel that same buzz that I have naturally when I wake up. So I prefer to wait until I feel my hunger drive kicking in, which is usually much later, and then I have my first meal. So that's something that I would recommend. Um, I know that eating especially big bowls of potatoes and all of these foods that are healthy and yummy and filling and great for many other reasons, uh, I would check with a doctor, a professional, and see if if it's right for you just with you may want to break it up into have smaller meals throughout your day but it, that's just a recommendation do you make non-dairy cheese sauces and other sauces there they there could be compliant ones yes actually in my meal plan in the updated meal plan which i've just sent out is a cheese a garlicky cheesy I'll put parentheses, it's obviously not cheese at all, but a creamy garlicky sauce that you can use like a drizzle. You can use it with rice dishes. You can actually use it as a pasta sauce. And there's also one that I really like called an easy curry sauce. And you can use it for all the same things and you can also use it as a dip. And it is a thick sauce. So it's really, really yummy. Um, and you can get creative with it. With the garlicky one, you can add some diced tomatoes and blend it up and make it a uh, like a tomato-y, creamy pasta sauce. It tastes really good that way as well. But uh, I will continue to create some and uh, share them with you. What are the ratios of your starches? What would you estimate calories per day are for you? I couldn't even begin to tell you what the ratio of my starches are. I personally highly recommend having at least two meals per day with wet starches if you are trying to lose weight. Do not go down the path of only focusing on the veggies that are very low calorie density because you are gonna need to eat platefuls, absolute platefuls of zucchini and broccoli to get yourself to be full. And I, I just think that the satiation that you get from potatoes, from oatmeal, from rice and beans is an important component of being satisfied on this way of eating. And that's just from personal experience. So, I, and I don't know what my ratios are. I really try, I know that everyone comes from a good place when they ask these questions about portions and weighing and measuring, but it really is what I'm trying to steer people away from and saying that you don't need to do that. You know, you have to, and that's why a 30 day challenge, just doing it on your own even. I know I, I hosted a 30 day challenge for everyone on um, Instagram in September and I may do that going forward. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do something like that again. But you can do a 30 day challenge on your own and my biggest recommendation is to prove it to yourself. Prove, you know, even though you may have believed that eating potatoes is going to make you gain weight or eating oatmeal is going to make you gain weight, prove it to yourself. That's all I can say. Prove it to yourself. Show yourself that you've eaten, you know, 100% low calorie density for a month. And you will see if you had body fat to lose, if you actually, you know, are 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight and you eat only these foods, you're the only one that can prove that to yourself. It's very difficult for me to tell you the exact results that you're going to see, but I proved it to myself and I actually show, I was actually surprised with how low the number on the scale got. I, I didn't have an exact number in mind, but I thought I would be around 110 or 112. I kept losing and I wasn't even weighing myself after I got to around that number. I thought that's where I was. And then one day I stepped on the scale like weeks later again and I had continued to lose weight. I thought, whoa, and I'm eating just as much. Like I, and I actually started to introduce the avocado and the, uh, a bit of tofu, some fruit jam and oatmeal once in a while and pasta. So ev again, every body, everybody's body is different. Ideas for salt, oil, sugar-free condiments. 
lemon and lime juice if you like the taste of lemon and lime it is so versatile it is so inexpensive the squeezed lime juice that i buy in the container that you see in my videos is one dollar at walmart like you can put it on everything you can actually put some on fruit and it makes it like you know takes like a sour candy it turns fruit into sour candy to me you can put it on salads you can put it on lemon uh, sorry on lemon you can put it on rice you can do lemon and lime with rice and onions and beans and i i'm all for lemon and lime it's just such a an underrated simple thing that you can do to make your food taste a bit more interesting spices garlic powder onion powder dill spice curry powder cumin um, those are my go-to ones. I know you said salt, salt free, so I won't say soy sauce, but I do soy sauce and I use salt. I use salt. If it, it makes my food taste a little bit nicer when I have veggies and you know, I like to add a bit of salt. If you don't want to do salt, then by all means give it up. But, uh, for me, I like to add a bit of sea salt to my food. Were you thin as a kid and teenager or did you struggle with your weight up until now? So I was a healthy weight as a child. I was, a, I would say on the thinner side. Uh, when I, when did I start? You know, it's interesting. I feel like when I started gaining weight, I didn't even realize it happened until like, I, I don't know, I, I, maybe you can relate to this. Do you notice it when you gain weight right away? Because for me, I felt like even when I lost all the weight the first time and then I gained it back again, I think I think back and think, how come I didn't realize it as it was happening? I must have because I was unintentionally or like subconsciously choosing clothing that would hide it. Like I would only wear the big, long, flowy dresses that really went out and you couldn't see, you know, that like nothing that was at all going into your figure or touching my stomach because I had you know, quite a bit more stomach fat than I was used to. Um, and I felt uncomfortable with that. Like if I would wear pants or jeans and I sat down, I wasn't used to that feeling because yes, I was slimmer as a child and teenager, but I would say like mid to late twenties, I noticed myself gaining the weight and then I'm 33 now. So even last year I was at my highest. So, uh, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Just, it just kind of happened. You don't realize you get into habits and patterns of eating things. I was putting like tablespoons of peanut butter in, in smoothies and making uh, desserts, like healthy vegan desserts with peanut butter. I was going to like restaurants and ordering vegan burgers and fries, vegan dishes, lots of vegan things that have ton of oil in them. All of the vegan cheeses, and meats, well, I'd say most of them contain a lot of oil. In fact, like oil is one of the main components of them. And I was having quite a bit of them. Uh, what do you think about raw vegan? Raw plant foods are incredibly healthy. They have so many vitamins and nutrients and they're fantastic. However, I would say if you're trying to combine low calorie density and raw veganism, then you would have to eat like mountains of greens and fruit in order to be satiated and in order to have the energy you need for your day. Um, I know a lot of raw vegans actually use cashews and nuts and seeds and hemp and chia, things that are higher and, and oil, things that are higher in calories per pound. And I think that that kind of counteracts the extreme low calorie density of all the raw fruit and veggies that they're eating. So would I mix it with low calorie density? Probably not, just personally. Um, I, as I said, the wet starch is really a main, the main part of this. So for me, uh, steamed potatoes, boiled potatoes, baked pota any any kind of potatoes that doesn't have oil on it, and um, again, the barley, the millet, these are things that you need to cook. So I, I personally wouldn't mix them, but uh, as far as it being healthy, it's very nutritious as long as you're able to get full eating those foods. Best foods for weight loss and you need to measure portions. No, I don't need to measure portions. And you know, I would just simplify it for yourself. Just fruit, veggies, wet starch 
and beans. If you want like four things to just keep in mind, fruit, veggies, wet starch, beans. Don't overcomplicate it, you know? Start with a few simple meals. A meal could be something as simple as rice, some chopped, like a handful of dark leafy greens chopped up, some, like half a can of chickpeas or black beans or kidney beans or lentils, and half of a potato or a whole potato if you have a big appetite like me, a baked potato. If you can eat that in a, in a dish, that's a beautiful meal, healthy, filling, again, no oil, and then you can season it with those spices that I mentioned, some lemon juice, lime juice, a bit of sea salt, delicious, there's a meal. You know, um, another meal is some, a frozen mango, a handful of frozen mango, uh, a filling bowl of oatmeal, cinnamon, stevia, and a splash of unsweetened soy milk. There's a breakfast. There's a, or even a filling dessert if you like oatmeal for dessert. It doesn't need to be complicated. What are your reasons for going vegan and how to deal with friends and family if they've ever tempted you? Uh, my initial reason for going vegan was kind of curiosity. I remember I was watching a lot of videos by Fully Raw Christina, another vegan YouTuber who's a raw vegan, Marcus Rothkranz, and watching people online who just seemed so full of energy and so healthy and talking about all these health benefits that I thought, oh, why don't I try? And so I, I was doing actually more close to like a raw thing when I first, first started. Um, and then in that time when I was watching videos on YouTube, I would learn about more of the implications that eating meat and dairy have on animals, the environment, but watching some of the animal stuff, to be honest, really just, that's what made me stick, being, stick with being vegan, if that makes sense. So I initially went into it for health reasons, just curious about seeing if it would give me more energy and make me a more healthier me. And then I am still vegan because of of course the health benefits as well, but the animals. I just, I really saw that, hey, I'm enjoying all of these delicious foods, and at the time, even just when I ended up eating packaged vegan foods and delicious things, I thought, well, to me, a burger tastes like a burger whether I'm hurting an animal or not, so why not not hurt an animal, if that makes sense? Like, I would enjoy a veggie burger just as much as I would have enjoyed a burger that, you know, killed an animal. Um, I'm not a vegan who goes out and tries to tell other people that they need to do this and you know, trying to force other people. I've always had respect that you know, everyone gets to choose how to eat and what they wanna put in their own body and I am trying, I always try to be as respectful as possible when it comes to other people's choices. Um, but in response to this question, that's what I went vegan for. Initially for health, and what kept me vegan was the animals because I love animals and once you see certain videos and you see certain things and it just sticks in your mind and you're thinking, I can't, I just can't do that, I don't want to do that, I don't want to be a part of that, I don't want to participate in that. And I know that realistically I'm only one person and me not eating fish or eggs or drinking milk or whatever else is not going to save every animal, I know that. but it just makes me feel better knowing that I'm not contributing to that. So that's my response. Next. Do you typically go back for a second helping at lunch and dinner? Mm, I usually fill up my plate pretty big because I'm pretty good at gauging my hunger and what I'm going to feel like eating at the moment. So something that I'll do is I'll usually put almost all of everything that I make onto my big plate, which is, I think it's actually supposed to be a serving plate from West Elm, but I use it as my dinner plate. And so I'll put everything on, on this plate and then 
Sometimes it will be too much and so I'll just put it to the side and then an hour later I'll go and get the rest or if there's some still on the stovetop then I'll eat the rest plus whatever was on the stovetop and I'll eat that. So everything gets eaten whether it gets eaten when I initially sit down for my meal or not like if I'm hungry later then I'll go and finish the rest but yeah. There's nothing, if you're asking this to, for me to say, is there anything wrong with eating second helpings? Not at all. When I say eat until you're comfortably full, I mean eat until you're comfortably full. And that's it. Don't, you don't have to even ask yourself. This is not something where you need to, you know, as you're having your bites, I don't want you thinking, am I comfortably full? Should I stop now? Like just eat until you're like, oh, I'm good. I don't want any more. Is it a bit of a leap of faith to go vegan and does your will and strength grow with time? I think you're talking more about like a plant, a plant based diet, like do, so this, I'm, I'm assuming this is, this is coming from someone who currently eats meat and they're wondering if they give up meat, are they going to feel that it takes a lot of willpower to stay on a plant based diet? I will say you would be surprised how delicious vegan meals are. You know, sometimes I wish that I could just have everyone come to my house and cook delicious filling vegan meals for everybody and have you taste it and have you enjoy it and you'd be so surprised if you're not currently vegan, you'd be so surprised. First of all, you might not even register that, you're, that, it's, that it's a vegan dish. Half of the time when I make meals for people who aren't vegan, they're like, oh, this is delicious. I would eat this again. And only when you know, I say, oh yeah, it's, a ve it's vegan, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, okay. So I mean, vegan can be so many delicious things. You can have filling potato dishes and chili and soups and wraps and pasta dishes. So it's not this thing where you really feel like you're missing out on something. You know, if you're embracing plant-based meals, you'd be surprised once you get creative and find some recipes that you really love that you won't really miss eating animal products or dairy. Why is caffeine not allowed when following a starch-based diet? Well, I never said that caffeine isn't allowed. Um, I just wouldn't recommend caffeine for health reasons, you know, especially um, because sleep is so important. So if you have a hard time getting to sleep and caff or if caffeine makes you feel jittery, you know, there's many different reasons to not start drinking coffee if you already aren't used to drinking coffee. Obviously caffeine in sodas, I definitely would stay away from. I don't recommend sodas or sugary syrupy types of drinks at all. Uh, but if you're having, you know, black tea, that's not going to derail your weight loss plans at all. I just don't really talk about caffeine because it's not something that I would say, you know, go and start drinking coffee or go and start drinking tea if it's not something that you already do. Um, if you are adding sugar to it, I definitely would stop doing that. Um, you can use a bit of stevia instead. I'll be completely honest, when I go out, I'll have a coffee with some soy milk and stevia once in a while and I often have black tea at home um, but I have to say it does not disrupt my sleep. I am an amazing sleeper. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I, I have always been able to literally put my head on the bed and it's like three, two, one and I'm asleep. So and I don't know, I always joke that it's my Italian genes that I could probably have a double espresso before bed and still get a good night's sleep. But uh, again, not something that I would necessarily recommend to people. This is going to be the final question of this video. How to meal plan for maximum weight loss? Keep it simple. This is also how to meal plan for when you're on a budget. This is also how to meal plan for when you want to stick to something and, and when you want to save time and when you're really busy and you don't want to have to put in a ton of thought and effort every day. So in general, the simpler you can keep your grocery list and the, le the least items that you need to make a wide variety of meals, the better. If you watch my videos, you'll notice how often I use corn, onions, spinach. I put spinach in my dips, I put spinach in my smoothies, I put spinach in my rice bowls, in pasta, in soups. I could go out and buy 
many different varieties of kale and dandelion, dandelion greens and arugula and all of these other fancy greens. But I find that spinach is super versatile. It has a mild flavor. And so that's my dark leafy green of choice when I'm trying to keep it simple. And so just, you know, simplify things as much as possible and, and create almost like you know a capsule wardrobe? Create a capsule grocery list where you know you have maybe 30 to 40 items that you have to have stocked in your fridge and pantry at all time and then make those ingredients into so many different recipes. Just really experiment on how many different meals you can make using the same items. So and, and I've shared this in several videos. I will do an updated grocery list video and show you exactly how I fill up my cart when I'm buying my groceries online so that you can, if you want to copy that or, you know, make some adjustments so that it suits your own preferences. Um, but keep it simple. Keep it simple. You don't need 20 different breakfast recipes. You don't need 20 different lunches. Just keep it simple. Start with three breakfasts, three lunches, three dinners, and three snacks slash desserts slash treats that you like. So get creative, experiment. At first, when this is new, you're going to have to try some more things because some of them might not be your favorite. But once you have it down to things that you genuinely enjoy eating, just put those on repeat. Keep it really, really simple. Things like rice, you know, you can make a ton of rice and have that ready. That's an easy meal prep type of thing. Um, I have a few meal prep recipes, uh, a few sauces, a few other dishes in my seven day meal plan, which is on my website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and took away some helpful tidbits and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.